everyone. My name is Joel Arvizu Zabala, and I am a curriculum writer and curriculum specialist with the Utah Division of State History. Myself and my team members have been working on a really wonderful project, a curriculum project, with the John Jarvie Historical Ranch located in Daggett County, Utah. We have had a wonderful opportunity um, throughout this work incorporating history, social studies, science, language arts, geology, uh, and other various subjects to support uh, children, uh, specifically in fourth and fifth grade. However, we have provided additional lesson content in some of our lessons for higher grades so that educators and teachers can scaffold the content to meet the needs of your students. So I'd like to begin the presentation today with a quick overview of the curriculum project and would like to share with you the curriculum document that we were able to create. Uh, as you will be able to see in just a moment, the curriculum document is going to be an essential piece of uh, resource for you as an educator uh, or someone who works with children. Uh, and we are very excited to share this with you. So this is the title page of the curriculum packet. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we are working, have been working with the John Jarvie Historic Ranch. Um, as you can see, uh, these are the authors on the project and uh, what an amazing team that I had to work with. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity to develop this curriculum with some really amazing colleagues uh, who have expertise in history and education. We want to provide some acknowledgments regarding the curriculum and the lesson plan that I'll be showing to you today. Uh, specifically and foremostly, we want to thank the Bureau of Land Management, the Bernal Field Office specifically here in Utah, for their financial as, uh, as well as other resources and supports that they provided to the project. So we want to thank you immensely for your partnership and for your trust in us to develop something that you'll be able to use on site when students visit the John Jarvie Historical Ranch themselves, along with teachers, parents, families, and the community at large. Uh, we also want to give a special um, acknowledgement to the American West Center, who worked with some of our uh, staff to specifically develop the in-depth historical content that is provided in many of the lessons that you'll see in other videos presented by my colleagues also. Today, I have the opportunity to specifically focus on the history and architecture lesson. And as you can see here uh, in the curriculum document, you'll be able to easily hyperlink uh, through the various sections of the curriculum document in a way that hopefully is useful to you and gives you direct access to the content that you need. So let's go ahead and begin with the history and architecture lesson. So one of the major goals that I had with this lesson was really to create uh, a lesson plan that was easy for educators to use that really understood and validated the diverse set of experiences and responsibilities that teachers have in the classroom from the ability and the necessity to scaffold content to provide language arts uh, experiences that are immersive and content driven uh, to model and to um, protect the state standards that are necessary for our instruction when we work with young people in our classrooms. And so I want to first briefly go over you over with you the sections of the lesson plan. And then I have a presentation that I'd like to share with you that gives you a broad picture about how to orient yourself as an educator to the project, as well as how to best support your students in the learning uh, goals and intentions of this work as well. So you'll see that the lesson plan is constructed into various different sections. In the beginning of the lesson plan, you will have an opportunity to get a quick overview, as you can see here, of the lesson in terms of grouping, uh, collaboration needs, uh, time needs, and et cetera. And then you'll have a quick overview or summary of the lesson plan. Next, you'll have a section that identifies the uh, state core standards across multiple states, including Wyoming, Colorado, and of course, Utah. We have background information for educators as well, which is an opportunity for you to learn some content knowledge yourself in order to be best prepared to support your students when you're teaching this in the classroom, or hopefully uh, in the future to actually teach some of this content on site with members of the Bureau of Land Management uh, and other volunteers who work in the community to support the historic ranch itself. 
Next, you'll see teacher resources. So this continues the background knowledge that's necessary for teachers, including lesson vocabulary that you'll want to introduce to your students. This is a great opportunity to expand or incorporate some of this vocabulary into your science vocabulary lessons or other lessons that require students to learn new words and to put them into practice in the classroom. Uh, the biggest part of this project, which I'll explain more in detail in a few moments, is the students get to do a project-based learning, or a PDL, where they get to replicate a water wheel and really learn about the mechanics and the science behind it, the purpose of water wheels in terms of human history, and then towards the end of the lesson, you have an opportunity for a lesson extension, which will help uh, educators as ourselves, as well as our students, better understand how water wheels were really a premise to modern technology, specifically hydroelectric power. Throughout the lesson, you'll have step-by-step -step examples uh, as well as a materials list so that you know exactly which materials to purchase or to request uh, for your students to do the lesson effectively. And then you see pictures and step-by-step -step guides on, that will guide you through the lesson to do it in the classroom. One of the best uh, things about project-based learning, for those who may be less familiar with it, is that it's really a hands-on experience that allows students to engage with the content and to put into practice what they've learned and read and discussed in the classroom with our educators. One of the things that's unique to the history and architecture lesson for the John Jarvie Ranch is some Lexile student content. So this is leveled content that has been specifically geared towards the lower to medium range of readers in fourth grade. And it will provide pictures as well as uh, content and history and ideas that the students will need to learn in order to uh, do their project-based learning. And it has been Lexiled uh, and leveled to, uh, like I mentioned, the lower to mid-level fourth grade meeting level and teachers uh, who are watching this feel free to read this content and then also relexile it yourself or you know scaffold it uh, providing sentence stems for students so that they can better access the content and hopefully this will be a great resource this will be also a really fun interdisciplinary approach uh, something that you could use both in science and language arts to focus on literacy and and scientific inquiry the Jarvie Ranch extension I'll talk more about in the presentation, uh, but as I mentioned, it's a really great opportunity to look at water, water source, water quality, uh, understanding hydroelectric power. Uh, and then at the end of the lesson, you will have an exit ticket, which has a set of questions that you can pass out to your students to assess how they experience the lesson. Some sample questions include, what, um, what was most confusing for you in this lesson? That gives teachers great information about how they could better teach the lesson in the future, or to see how students may be struggling in other areas and utilizing this particular lesson as a case example. So we're very excited about this. And then the last part of the lesson plan are links to additional resources. And then of course, uh, references that were used to create and write the lesson specifically. So what I'd like to do now is go ahead and transfer over to the presentation part. And in this presentation, I'm gonna give the big overview of the lesson, uh, its intentions, its goals, uh, and mostly what I hope to do is inspire some inquiry and curiosity in all of you uh, and share the passion that I had in writing this lesson plan and the curriculum as a whole with all of you. And so this is a really great opportunity uh, to uh, learn about these bigger picture items. So one of the things that you'll see here in this first lesson is, uh, or this first slide, excuse me, uh, is just a quick overview of the lesson plan. So the purpose of this lesson is to introduce students to the history and architecture of the water wheel. Through leveled reading content, students will be able to directly connect with the history and architecture of water wheels, leading to students building their own replicas of water wheels at the end of the lesson. Students will have opportunities to work in teams of two or three, or they can work individually as well. This is really important. Uh, sometimes our students with unique learning needs um, or behavioral needs really need an opportunity to grapple with some of these more difficult concepts on their own first before they work in a group. So please feel free to review the lesson and to really think about students who have unique needs and unique learning and behavioral needs in the classroom and think about giving them an opportunity to do some of this work on their own before they join groups. Uh, sometimes it can be frustrating with working with other groups and those of us who've been teachers understand that that can be the case. So really be flexible in this. And as you know your students better than anyone, uh, take an opportunity to think about who will work best collaboratively, who will work best individually, but then ultimately the, 
the end goal is for all students to share their knowledge and to share what they've learned uh, at some point in your classroom. Uh, the water wheel at Jarvie Ranch is the inspiration, and I'll show you an actual picture of the water wheel at Jarvie Ranch at the very end of the presentation. Uh, there's a couple of things here. So regarding the general history and the replica at the ranch, when you go to visit Jarvie Ranch, hopefully with your students, you'll have an opportunity to see the water wheel, and it's quite amazing. And as mentioned just a moment ago, it is a replica of the original. One of the things that we have to understand about state historical sites or historical sites generally is that just with most things, uh, they can change and shift um, over time. And it's the responsibility of the programs or divisions or departments that manage these sites to really preserve them to the best of their ability or to replicate you know, items that were once there in a way that matches history to the best of our ability as well. So although the water wheel at Jarvie Ranch is a replica, it's still an amazing structure and something that can inspire, inspire a lot of creativity and inquiry for you, for you as an educator, hopefully, uh, as it did for me and with your students. So in this particular section of the lesson, it's really about understanding how water wheels can generate energy and how water wheels serve as irrigation, right, sources for the food that we eat, such as gardens. At the Jarvie Ranch, uh, annually, there is a garden. Uh, there is a medium-sized garden available at the ranch. And the water wheel is connected to a res small reservoir area and a trench where hopefully, you know, as if it's working effectively, we'll transfer water to the garden and help irrigate it, which is really great. The Green River is the river that's directly located to Jarvie Ranch, uh, and it is a beautiful place to see. Uh, I had the opportunity to visit it in uh, November of 2019, and even though it was uh, technically the winter months, it was still a breathtaking and wonderful experience for me to see the river, to see all of the trees and plants um, and to utilize the site to spark my creativity to collect uh, to create the lessons that you're seeing today. So in regards to this particular water wheel, the most important thing is to understand that it is an undershot water wheel and students will learn that about the different types of water wheels uh, when you teach the lesson in the classroom. The water wheel located at Jarvie Ranch, a replica of the original, is an undershot water wheel that uses the current or the flow of the Green River to move the wheel from underneath. The replica of the original Jarvie Ranch water wheel is located inside a small dam or reservoir enclosed in concrete. The reservoir fills with water and then the water level of the, when the water level of the river rises. This process aids in being able to deliver both uh, water from the wheel, uh, water to the wheel, and then subsequently to the nearby ranch, uh, uh, ranch garden, which is really great. So the content knowledge, as I mentioned earlier, is a big piece of this lesson plan. Uh, student, students will have direct reading content that you can use in various areas of your classroom, such as during language arts time or during science. Uh, it's a Lexile reading um, that takes original scientific knowledge and then really broke it down or scaffolded it, like I mentioned, to that fourth grade level. Uh, in this particular area, students will have uh, access to read about two primary areas. They'll understand the, the anatomy, right, or the mechanics of a water wheel so that eventually they can recreate them on their own and build some really in-depth knowledge through their inquiry in that project-based learning piece. And then the next uh, item is they will understand types and general uses, uh, as well as the history of water wheels, which will be really great for them. I'm hoping this will be a really great opportunity for students to get excited about water wheels, hopefully as much as I did when I had the opportunity to write the curriculum and when I visited Jarvie Ranch. Water wheels, so this is from the Lexile content specifically. So an example is water wheels are made in the shape of a wheel and have, so I believe my sound may have cut off there. However, let's go ahead and continue. Water wheels are made in the shape of a wheel and have been around for over 2000 years. Water wheels have allowed humans to do more and more different kinds of tasks from grinding grain to irrigating crops and more. Water wheels have specific parts that help them function for the purposes that we need as humans. Use the picture below, and this is from the lesson, uh, to see all the different parts that make up a water wheel. Later on, you will have an opportunity to build your own smaller sized versions of a water wheel as well. And so this is an example where this content has vocabulary. So always make sure to visit the vocabulary before you do the lesson. Perhaps introduce the vocabulary a day or two before you actually deliver the lesson so that students are prepared to read the content more effectively. 
As I mentioned earlier, project-based learning is a big component to this lesson, and students are going to have the opportunity to create a replica water wheel. Uh, this can be done collaboratively or individually to best meet the needs of your students. Uh, there's three major things in order to prepare effectively for the PBL. You'll want to gather your materials, and there's a material list available in the lesson plan. Uh, you want to give students an opportunity for ideation, as I like to call it. Give them a chance to see water wheels, see pictures of water wheels, maybe utilize some of the additional resources to show what water wheels are, and then give your students an opportunity to draw or to create or just to think, you know, ask questions such as, what, you know, what do you think a water wheel is used for? How, how many years have water wheels been around? Um, you know, have you ever seen water wheels in real life? And where did you see them? Tell us a little bit or tell me a little bit about the geography or the place where you saw them. Was it attached to a building? Was it directly in the river? Was it small, medium, or large? Uh, describe its features. This gives students a really great opportunity to know that learning is a scientific and a creative process. And so please support that with your students as much as you possibly can. And then the last piece is to collaborate or to work individually and to build their replica water wheels. So for those of you who may be less familiar with project-based learning, it's a, it is a major part of this lesson. As the teacher, you have the option to guide the students into two different directions. One is the guided PBL, where you can direct students on how to create a replica water wheel as, an, uh, as a means to learn about the basic components to the machinery. And in the lesson, you have step-by-step -step guides in order to do that for your students. Uh, the second option in this PBL is more creative and flexible, where you can give students the materials listed in the lesson, and then they, they can work in teams of three or four to design their own water wheel and to really, really, really get into the nitty gritty of that creative scientific process, that innovation process that sometimes we don't always have the opportunity to do in the classroom. But these lessons will hopefully give you permission to do so. Um, and they've been created in a way to really support you as the teacher and, more, and, and also, as importantly, support the students in learning that's really fun and engaging. One of the uh, Harvey Ranch extensions that I definitely wanted to hit on in this presentation is the connection to hydroelectric electric power. As you can see in the photo there, uh, the uh, Jarvey Ranch is located very near um, Jordanell, or excuse me, Flaming Gorge Reservoir. Sorry about that. And uh, it is a really great opportunity for students to see how, you know, ancient water wheels, which have been around for quite some time, um, give gave humans an opportunity to really understand how to capture and build on and utilize uh, the power of water. So in this Jarvie Ranch extension, you will experiment with water movement, and then students will also be able to create a blueprint for the reservoir. So if they had to, um, if they're being on site at Jarvie Ranch and interacting directly with the Green River, this is a great way uh, to get students to think about how moving water helps us to generate electricity for homes, cities, and towns. Uh, there are three main ideas that can be explored with students in this extension. First is that hydroelectric power is generated from moving water. Second, hydropower is mostly a renewable resource, which is very important. Um, this is particularly important for places in the Great Basin where uh, there is an, you know, an arid desert climate and water can be limited. And as humans, it's important for us to be really aware and conscious of that and to think about how we utilize our resources effectively. Uh, third, that the moving water is a form of energy and can be used to generate electricity. So you can talk about hydroelectric power in the classroom, or if you do have the opportunity to visit the ranch and maybe even drive past the um, um, Flaming Gorge Reservoir, it's a beautiful sight to see and something that would be incredibly meaningful and memorable for you and your students. The last piece is I just want to quickly share some additional resources, uh, teacher supports and preparation resources um, as you access the curriculum. So first and foremost, we really want to highlight the major intentions of this lesson is to engage critical thinking in students, it's to even help with literacy development, and then it's definitely there for scientific inquiry. Uh, this lesson includes relevant standards in science and language arts across the states of Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. Additionally, the lesson plan includes a section to develop teacher background knowledge to support successful teaching of the lesson. Finally, at the end of the lesson, there are additional resources to build content knowledge and to supplement the lesson plan. Uh, we hope that you have a wonderful experience teaching uh, these lesson plans as much as we had creating them. And at the 
very last, I want to just share with you how wonderful this project has been uh, to work on. One of the greatest pieces to this curriculum project has been the creativity that we put into the process, understanding the needs of teachers and students in the modern classroom. And we hope that you can reach out to the Utah State Division of History um, or to any one of us as the authors uh, to maybe ask more questions if you're interested. Uh, but more importantly, we hope this video helped to give you an introduction to the lesson plans and to get you really excited about what you're going to be doing with your students in the classroom. So thank you so much for your time today and we hope you have a wonderful time teaching this lesson with your students.